Uh, dear colleagues, it's a great pleasure to be here and to summarize where we are with uh, percutaneous mitral valve repair. Uh, here's my disclosure slide. There is two main uh, types of uh, percutaneous mitral valve repair. The first one is the uh, percutaneous mitral valve annuloplasty via the coronary sinus, and the second one is the edge-to-edge -edge procedure. We start first with the uh, percutaneous mitral valve annuloplasty, which is an uh, indirect annuloplasty, which has been mainly developed for functional mitral regurgitation. The anatomy of the coronary sinus has uh, attracted a lot of interest in recent years with the development of cardiac resynchronization therapy, but it's also very useful in, uh, in uh, percutaneous mitral annuloplasty since it exploits the uh, relationship, uh, close relationship between the mitral valve annulus and the coronary sinus. There is three devices that have been developed. The first one is the Edwards Monarch system, the second one is the carrier device, and the third one is the PTMA implant. They are uh, inserted into the coronary sinus via uh, a jugular venous function or a subclavian function, and uh, they all work the same way. Uh, they are supposed to shrink the mitral annulus to increase the leaflet coaptation and so to decrease the degree of mitral excitation. The first device we have been involved in is the Edwards uh, device. has three parts. The uh, distal anchor, proximal anchor, which are self-expanding, and in between you have this bridge. You can see that there is a purple uh, biomaterial here. This purple material uh, holds the bridge in an elongated state, and with time this material dissolves and the bridge compresses. So you can expect that the effect of this device will be delayed uh, within a few weeks. Uh, the result of this uh, device has been published recently in Jack Intervention last year. 72 patients have been enrolled. Uh, the device could be implanted in seven, uh, 59 patients, so a success rate of 82%, and not implanted in 13, mainly because of tortuous anatomy of the coronary sinus and because the size, was outside the, uh, size of the coronary sinus was outside the offered range of the device. It was implanted, in at the, in, implanted at the intended location in 55 patients and not exactly at the intended location in four. The procedural time was 84 minutes. The event free survival of death, myocardial infarction, and tamponade at 30 days was 91%, and uh, at 12 months, 82%. In this table are summarized uh, the adverse events. You can see that there was two uh, procedural related uh, adverse events uh, with two tamponades due to the guide wire perforation. There was two uh, device related complications with two MI, and it was eight death, mainly related to the severe uh, condition of the patient. Uh, among the uh, 59 patients which had been implanted, a systematic coronary angiography was performed at uh, 30, uh, 90 days. And you can see that uh, approximately one third of the patient has some degree of coronary artery compression. There was also five device malfunction with one partial migration and four separation. Here an example of patient with a diagonal compression. The device is here, I summarize in with uh, this cartoon. And so the compression of this diagonal leads to a myocardial infarction. Here, at the end of the procedure, you can see the distal anchor, proximal anchor, the bridge, and you can see that the bridge is connected to the proximal anchor. At 90 days, the proximal anchor is here, the bridge is here, it's completely disconnected. In terms of efficacy, it was only evaluated in 22 patients. There was some uh, improvement of the degree of metal regurgitation from a grade 2.5 to 1.8. Again, a limited number of patients evaluated 22. The second device is a carry-on device. Uh, it works uh, the same way with the proximal and the distal anchor in between the bridge. Uh, the main difference is that the effect is immediate. 48 patients have been uh, enrolled. Uh, procedural success rate was 63%. Again, same uh, range of MR uh, decrease, but no significant improvement in LV remodeling, but uh, functional improvement with, um, based on annual extra class, six minutes work date, and quality of life. And the third device is a PTMA, a little bit different. It has a free uh, lumen catheter in uh, which you can insert one to three rows to stiffen and uh, shorten the mitral annulus. The device is also different because you have to test it with a testing uh, catheter, and when you have MR decrease without co um, coronary artery compression, you can move to the definite device. 27 patients have been enrolled. The PTMA could be tested in only 19 patients. 
with an accurate reduction of material uh, regurgitation degree in 13, and the implantation could be effective only in nine patients. And you can see this was two device migration. One uh, patient has a diminished efficacy with time. However, there was a significant concern with this kind of device. It has technical limitation. There are some safety concern and some efficacy concern. Technical limitation because of the anatomy of the cranial sinus is highly variable from one patient to another. You can assess the anatomy using the angiography, but it's mainly performed during the, uh, the implantation. But the best way to assess the anatomy of the cranial sinus is CT, and you can see that we can reproduce very close uh, images from uh, the anatomy. With the CT, you can also measure the, uh, the diameter of the cranial sinus all along the cranial sinus, proximal part, distal part. And you can assess for some uh, curious anatomies, such as in patients with the abrupt curvature of the cranial sinus. Uh, an, an attempt was done to implant uh, the device, this was Edward's device, but with no success because of this curvature. CT is also very useful to assess the relationship between the cornea arteries and the cornea sinus. Indeed, the circumflex artery can run deep between the mitral annulus and the cornea sinus, or in some patients can run superficially above the cornea sinus. And you can easily guess that if you insert a device here, you can, can end up with a coronary artery compression. And this is a common feature. In this uh, autopsy study, you can see that the circumflex artery run uh, deep between the mitral annulus and the coronary sinus in two-thirds of the patient. This has also been confirmed in other pathology studies and also in human study uh, in vivo uh, using CT. The other concern is that uh, the uh, coronary sinus is not exactly at the level of the mitral annulus. It has been shown during autopsy study that the coronary sinus most of the time is behind the left arterial wall. It has been shown uh, ex vivo during anatomy. It's also uh, nicely shown during CT, and you can see that the coronary sinus is not at the level of the mitral annulus, which is here, but is uh, behind the left arterial wall. And uh, another important concern is that the distance between the mitral annulus is larger, higher uh, in patients with severe mitral regurgitation. We are the patient we are dealing with compared to patients without severe mitral regurgitation. And there is another safety concern that using this uh, annuloplasty, this indirect annuloplasty, you can only perform a very partial annuloplasty compared to what you can do with uh, the surgeon. To summarize this part, percutaneous mitral annuloplasty, so it's an indirect annuloplasty via the cranial sinus, does not seem to be a good approach so, because of suitability of the cranial sinus in terms of length, diameter, and tortuosity. Because this major safety issue between, between the relationship between the coronary sinus and uh, the coronary arteries, and because some efficacy issue between the, uh, because of the coronary sinus position uh, compared to the mitral annulus, and you only perform a partial annuloplasty. Now we move off to the edge to edge procedures. The principle is simple. You, uh, it consists to tie uh, together the tip of the leaflet and to create a double orifice. This uh, technique has been developed by a surgeon, Octavio Alferi, and uh, transposed to a percutaneous approach. Uh, there are two systems that have been developed. The first one is a mobile system developed by Edwards, who has been involved in. It was a complex catheter. You have here a suction port that is supposed to capture uh, the leaflet, uh, and the needle is here. Result has been published in uh, 2009. Uh, nine, uh, 15 patients have been enrolled, all with uh, organic matter regurgitation, and uh, the, the device has been abandoned because of a low rate of uh, success and the poor uh, durability of this uh, percutaneous edge to edge procedure. The most widely used system is a matter clip. <coughs> You can see that there is two arms, and these two arms are supposed to grab the mitral leaflet and tie them together. So the selection of candidate has been uh, proposed by the Everest trials. A patient with severe mitral regurgitation, you can cure either degenerative or functional mitral regurgitation. You need to have a central jet, either P2 or A2, no mitral annulus calcification, no significant leaflet calcification, and you need to have a mitral valve of at least 4 cm square to prevent the development of uh, mitral valve stenosis. The uh, enrollment also, an enrolled patient with uh, LV function <coughs> Ejection fraction of more than 25 and LVNC cyclic diameter between 40 and 55. 
for organic matter utilization, you need to have a small flight gap that is less than 10 millimeters and the flight width of less than 15. And an example of a huge flight gap that uh, may not be a good candidate for the matter clip. For functional matter regurgitation, uh, you need to have a coaptation length of at least two millimeter and coaptation depth, so the eight of the tenting area, uh, the tenting uh, distance of less than one, uh, 11 millimeter. Another example of candidate with uh, severe metro agitation, functional metro agitation, and you have a huge gap in severe metro agitation. Again, this patient may not be a good candidate for the matro clip. I'm not going to uh, the technique of the matra clip, but you are supposed to grasp both leaflets. You can see in 3D that both leaflets are grasped uh, with the clips, which is here. And uh, you need to achieve uh, this nice double orifice. The matra clip is here. You have the double orifice here before you release uh, the clip. What are the results? It's been first uh, published in, in Jack in 2009. Uh, it's an Everest 1 trial, 107 patients enrolled, uh, 84 patients with organic matter regurgitation, 23 with functional matter regurgitation. And the acute procedural success was 83%, meaning that the clip was implanted and no uh, significant regurgitation, at least less, uh, than grade, uh, less or equal than grade 2. Since the safety and the efficacy has been proven, uh, the Everest 2 trial has been uh, developed. To, uh, 79, 279 patients has been enrolled. It was a randomized study, two to one uh, uh, study, two for the device clip and one to surgery, and uh, ECHO was evaluated with a core lab. In terms of efficacy, you can see that uh, if you look at the freedom from death, mitral valve surgery, and reoperation, the efficacy was in favor of surgery. 88% for surgery, 72% for uh, the clip. In terms of the safety, you have an advantage for uh, the matro clip, 10% uh, against 70, uh, 57%. However, a uh, major part of the adverse event during surgery where the need for transfusion, and if you exclude the need for transfusion from the analysis, you end up with 5% with the clip, 10% for the surgery, and the difference was not any more significant. If you look at now as a degree of matro agitation, with a clip, you have still 20% of patients with a grade 3 or 4, so severe matter agitation, compared to only 3% with the surgery. Uh, now the matter clip has a CE markup, uh, a CE approval, and has been uh, implanted in uh, thousands of patients. It has many reports, uh, mainly uh, single center, but short series between 50 and uh, 100 of patients. Um, Main difference with the Everest trial is that this study in Europe uh, mainly uh, involved high-risk patients for surgery, mainly patients with functional matter regurgitation, and a majority of patients enrolled uh, in the registry in Europe uh, did not fulfill the uh, Everest criteria based on LV function, LV size, or uh, tenting area. Uh, I summarized one of the results uh, in one study. There is a decrease of the degree of matter regurgitation, almost uh, at least one grade in almost all patients. There is a functional improvement and there is some degree of improvement in LV remodeling with a high procedural success rate and a low procedure related event. However, there is some theoretical concern with the mature clip. The first one is to still develop a mature stenosis, but if you start with a mature valvaria or more than four, four centimeters square, the uh, development of mature stenosis is. Uh, <laughs> Uh, no de development of mitral stenosis can occur, but there is still a, a reduction of the mitral valve area from 5 cm square to approximately 3.5. With the clip, you can also create tension forces and distension of the mitral valve, but it has been shown that the mitral clip is very stable and there is a healing process. Another concern is that uh, using the percutaneous approach, you don't uh, do uh, uh, an annuloplasty. The first uh, edge to edge procedure developed by Elfrey was a combination of the edge to edge procedure and an annuloplasty, and there is very little evidence, at least one theory, uh, who has shown that using the only the surgical uh, edge to edge procedure, you can end up with acceptable long term results. <coughs> and the last concern is that uh, the feasibility of the bailout repair has been published recently in the Journal of Thoracic and Cardiovascular Surgery from the REST trial. Among the 178 patients, who uh, underrate as a mature clip, 37 had a mature valve surgery during the first year. 
And you can see that the plan for repair was 92%, and if, uh, at the end of the surgery, only 54% uh, uh, finally had a repair. Another important finding is that uh, among these 37 patients, a valve injury was observed in 11 patients. It was due to the clip in six patients, and it was uh, due to the difficulty in removing this clip in five other patients. So if we uh, summarize the HRS procedure, it's maybe a useful adjunct to the armamentarium of treatment for both functional and matter agitation, and it may be considered for high-risk patients for surgery with organic matter agitation, and could be considered in patients with functional matter agitation in addition to the medical therapy and the cardiac recognition therapy. A uh, uh, trial should uh, start in the following months, compare as a uh, uh, matter clip in this high-risk patient to the optimal medical therapy. So what is next? There is a multiple device that has been developed, and I'm going into all of them. They can be divided in uh, four different categories. The first one is a direct annuloplasty. You yeah, have seen that uh, percutaneous uh, annuloplasty via the current sinus is an indirect annuloplasty. You can also perform direct annuloplasty, which imitate the surgical annuloplasty. You can also perform uh, left ventricular reshaping. Uh, and this uh, kind of two device has been developed. I remind you that uh, functional metrolization is at least, uh, 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 it's mainly a d disease of the left ventricle and you can uh, develop device to reshape the left ventricle. There's a lot of effort has been developed to, uh, has been made to develop uh, percutaneous mitral valve replacement. Uh, at least uh, several companies are working on that. And also some companies are working on developing uh, how to implant a surgical annuloplasty percutaneously. So it's still a work in progress. And direct annuloplasty via the current sinus has shown important safety and efficacy issue. So h 2 procedure may be useful in selected patients with both functional and mitral agitation. However, the anatomy of the mitral valve and the MR pathophysiology is more complex than aortic stenosis. And as for conventional surgery, a combination of more than one transcatheter technique or procedure will most likely be needed to achieve a satisfactory result. I thank you for your attention.